You can't always rely on a simple linear foot, square foot, or each count to calculate an item's quantity. Sadly, things are rarely that simple. Fortunately, the Calculation tab allows you to choose the formulas you wish to apply to a takeoff quantity and any modifications necessary to achieve accurate results. The first field on the Item Detail Calculation tab determines the takeoff quantity used as the base of the item's calculation. Items use quantity 1 by default, but you can change it to quantity 2 or 3. Which quantity numbers you use is important to be aware of when setting up your conditions and on-screen takeoff. The Method to Use field determines what happens to those quantities. There are several options, but standard formula is the most common selection, so let's focus on that one first. The standard formula displays in the Formula Description section. However, before digging into the formula, you should be familiar with two additional values, on-center spacing and layers. These values live in the Condition Detailed Default Entry section in the lower left. The on-center spacing determines a horizontal repeat, such as placing a stud or screw every 16 inches along a wall. The Rows and Layers field is a multiplier, such as needing two layers of drywall to cover both sides of a wall or two coats of paint. We'll visit the other fields in this section a bit later. The standard formula takes the takeoff value from whichever quantity you selected and multiplies it by the height of that condition to get the square footage of the condition. Then, the formula divides the square footage by the on-center spacing and multiplies the whole thing by the number of layers. In some cases, the result of the standard formula might not be enough material, or you may just want to add some extra material as a precaution. The Waste Percentage field in the Calculation Method section adds additional material to the result to ensure you have enough of the item to complete the job. Now, not every item can use that same formula and still calculate correctly. Some items don't require the height or the on-center spacing figures and can return incorrect or broken results if you include them. If necessary, the installation method section allows you to ignore those fields in the calculation. Take a top or bottom track of a metal framed wall, for instance. The track runs the entire length of the wall, but the wall's height is irrelevant. The track installs horizontally, so you can ignore the height in the formula to calculate it correctly. You also place each piece of track one after another for the entire length of the wall, so any on-center spacing is also irrelevant. That means the item installs continuously, and you can also ignore the OC spacing in the formula. In addition to the standard formula, there are other, less commonly used formulas available. Enter Direct Quantity requires you to enter the quantity manually. This is great for items with incredibly complex requirements that QuickBid just can't perform. Default to Condition Quantity uses the raw takeoff quantity, with no additional formula or waste percentage added. And Quantity times Height, which is used primarily with count takeoff objects such as corner bead or gutter downspouts. Let's finish reviewing the Condition Detail Default Entry section in the lower left. Certain fields may be unavailable depending on the item setup, unit of measure, or installation method. You can select the item's division and section assignment in the Section field. You must enter a labor cost code if the item is a material in labor or labor only item. An entry in height overrides the height of the condition. Specific use cases may require entering a value here, but the height field should generally be left blank. Repeat Every is only available for items with a unit of measure of each and on conditions with a height value. It works like the on center spacing but repeats along the height of the condition. For example, think of a drywall screw. You need a screw every 16 inches on center along the wall length and every 16 inches along the wall height. We've already discussed what the on center spacing field does, but also be aware that you can use other units for the spacing in addition to inches. One final note about the rows and layers field. Be sure every item always has at least an entry of one. If left blank, the standard formula uses zero in its place, and anything multiplied by zero is zero, resulting in a busted calculation. The bottom right section, titled On Center Exception Factors, triggers an alternative formula to add additional material like waste. With these fields in use, if you use an on center spacing of 16 or 24 inches specifically, QuickBid substitutes the on center exception formula rather than using the standard formula. New QuickBid users should ignore these fields and simply use the Waste Percentage field. However, you may see items set up using these fields in your database if you're a legacy user. Therefore, you should continue to use them rather than spend time setting up new items. For more details about how the on-center exception factors work, see the QuickBid KBase article titled The Item Details Calculation Tab, On-Center Exception Factors. 
Setting up items can be one of the most challenging parts of using QuickBid. If you have a current maintenance subscription and need help, please don't hesitate to submit a how-do-I request to speak to a product specialist for assistance setting up items.